There are some children with Marfan syndrome who, who present very early with very severe findings. Um, so some children with very severe Marfan syndrome uh, tend to have more severe complications. These patients with so-called infantile or neonatal Marfan syndrome usually have parents that do not have the condition. So if a child, if we see an infant uh, with skeletal, cardiac, or ocular findings that are suggestive of Marfan syndrome, um, sometimes uh, that would indicate the severe form of infantile Marfan syndrome. On the other hand, if a parent has Marfan syndrome, uh, each of their children uh, is at a 50% risk of inheriting the condition. So sometimes we make a diagnosis in an infant because we know that the parent is affected. Infants with Marfan syndrome um, have a characteristic facial appearance and a characteristic skeletal appearance. Um, they tend to have uh, deep set eyes uh, and a narrow chin. Their fingers tend to be very long. Uh, their hands and feet also tend to be very long. And babies tend to be very long and, and, and thin. Um, so sometimes it's, it's the, the skeletal structure of an infant that is the first clue that there may, might be Marfan syndrome. Sometimes there's a change in the shape of the chest. So the chest can either stick out or cave in. And that, which is called a pectus, uh, can be another sign that the child may potentially have Marfan syndrome. When we see an infant with very long fingers, we think about Marfan syndrome when we start doing things like an echocardiogram to see whether there are cardiac findings that are consistent with the diagnosis. And so in a very young infant, even in the first few days of life, sometimes we can find aortic aneurysms and mitral valve problems that make the diagnosis of Marfan syndrome more likely.